Last time we talked about OR blue wrap and its use as a mask. It has three properties which make it very beneficial. It's permeable, it's water resistant, and it can protect against germs. Recently, there was an article put out by an institution in Florida indicating that it had great potential as a replacement material for N95s. They put out a couple patterns and I decided to try one. According to their instructions, both of their patterns had been fit tested. Their first pattern was a surgical mask style, as I had made in my previous video. The second style is more of a cup. It looks more like a traditional N95. Now, if you don't know what a fit test is, when you wear an N95, it's supposed to make a seal on the face. And that's to prevent any leakage around the edge of the mask so that you're breathing entirely through the mask. Uh, what they do is you put on the mask and they basically put a uh, helmet on you and then they spray saccharin in there and you're supposed to breathe it in. You're not supposed to be able to taste it. If you taste sweetness, that means that there's the seal is not appropriate, that it made it in under the mask and that's not a good fit. I had already made a surgical style mask, so I decided to try their second prototype, which is this cup shape. Now there were a couple improvements even in their surgical style mask. They reinforced their ties with yarn, which you can see peeking through here. And again, that's because these are meant to be tight on the face, and so the ties needed to be reinforced so they didn't snap when tied. The first thing I did was I cut out the pattern that was provided. You'll see here that there is darting, and then there are rectangles here, which is for the tie placement, and I did not cut that out on my initial pattern. After I made my first cutout, I actually decided to fold it in half, since it's symmetrical, and cut on a fold to keep myself from messing up any curves. So that made cutting much more efficient for me, because I ended up making several of them. So here you see it's two layers, and so I have it all cut out and I cut out my darts. Now what I did then is I had my template and I had cut out the placement and then I just took a pen and I marked the placement of those, which you can see here. I just made markings for the placement of all my ties. The next step was to actually make the ties themselves. So this requires four ties. They're all one inch width and 24 inches long. So again, I just cut several strips as I had previously. It also calls for eight 24 inch pieces of 100% acrylic yarn. They specifically suggested number four medium yarn. I happen to have this yarn lying around from another project. You can see that it's 100% acrylic. And here on the back of the label, you can see where it says medium number four. And that was specifically what they suggested and I just happened to have it in my craft room. So what I ended up doing, because the first time I cut out all eight, and you end up using two per tie. So my second time around is I actually cut four that were 48 inches long and then I just folded it in half when I sewed it together. So you can see here, there's my little loop and then again, I just enclosed the yarn with the seam all the way down, and then I sewed over the yarn at the end just to secure it distally. The next step is to sandwich your ties. So the first thing I did is I took a little clip here in the middle just to keep the two layers from shifting too much. And then I took my looped end, I just inserted it at the guide at the marks you had previously made, and then I used a zigzag stitch to secure it. You can see here that I've zigzagged all of my ties in place. So the next step is to make your darts. Now what the tutorial suggests is that you start at the apex and then go down a quarter inch from the tip of your dart. I found it easier to start a quarter inch away and then go towards the apex. I thought that was simpler to do. Once you've completed both your darts, you top stitch all the way around the mask, making sure that your darts are pointing towards the curved end of the mask. You see here, both darts are facing up. The next step here is to insert your wire. So this pattern called for 16 gauge wire, cut to five inches. I happen to have craft wire, but it was 22 gauge. 
so this was not appropriate. The tutorial does mention that if you have 20 gauge, to simply make three of these wire inserts and put them all in there. After some digging, I was able to find some 16 gauge wire. So the next step requires some pliers. If you have needle nose pliers, that should work. I believe these are jeweler's pliers. They came with a kit that I had. And so what you wanna do is just make little loops at the end. And that basically is just to prevent you from ripping your fabric. You also wanna square it down so that there's no rough edges there. You wanna make sure that your loops are going the same direction and again, just sort of square it down. When you're done, it should be about four and a half inches long. And that's what that looked like. So this is, is actually gonna be the nose piece. It's when it, what's gonna allow you to mold it to your face. So what you do now is you insert it into your mask in between your top ties. You can add some clips to make sure your wire doesn't move around and then you're just gonna create a seam basically from this corner to that corner and just go across. Here you can see I created that seam just to enclose my wire. Now the next step is to actually make it into that cup shape. You're gonna have to bend this wire a little bit just so that you can get that shape and you're just gonna match your seams and then clip it in place. So then you're going to create a seam back stitching at the beginning and then coming across it's a quarter inch seam. This is what it's going to look like and then you just trim off a little excess. The final step is to reinforce your bottom seam here. You're just going to stitch across all the darting just to reinforce that area. And that's it. You've completed your mask. My husband used to do hazmat at a university and one of his responsibilities was to do the fit testing. So he helped me do my own fit test at home. As a substitute for saccharin, we used tang. I don't know if you've ever made tang, but when you open it up or pour it or anything, you get all this powder in the air and you breathe it in and everything tastes like orange for a while. Unfortunately, my mask did not pass a fit test. Now that could be for any number of reasons. It could be my fit was off, was my construction off, is it the material itself? I'm not sure, but my mask did not pass my fit test, which again means that it is not appropriate as a replacement for an N95. There is a popular mask that's readily found on the internet that claims that it can pass a fit test. However, it requires double-sided tape to do so. Taping a mask to your face is not an appropriate way to achieve a seal. According to the makers of this design, this has the potential to pass a fit test. Mine did not. Could it be because I'm an average seamstress? Could it be that the fit for my face is just wrong? I'm not sure. However, I still think it has many qualities that make it superior to your average cotton mask. It still felt nice on the face. It had what felt like a better seal. It was at least close to my face. It's waterproof. So I still think that this is better than any other design I've seen so far. Again, it's up to your individual institution whether you're able to wear these. So please follow the guidelines of your own institution. Stay safe, stay home.